Hello, 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 and welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday, happy Thursday. For those of you who are not sure where you are and who I am, welcome to Joanne's Healing Within. I am your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne, your holistic integrative teacher, Reiki master, where are my cards? Reiki master, card creator, card reader, licensed and certified holistic personal trainer, medical astrologer, the list goes on and goes on and goes on. And I got so distracted, I forgot to show you my cards. We can't forget them, can we? How are you all doing today? I don't know about you guys, but whoo! I'm on top of the world and also a little overwhelmed. Got a lot going on behind the scenes. Hello there, Anne. Our faithful client, her faithful viewer, rather. So, for those of you who are here with me, I like for you to do me a favor. Please remember to share, like, and comment on today's show. And I'm hoping my uh, guests will be sharing and sharing out the show as well as we are live, because that's how everything keeps going round, around, around, around. So, anyhow, again, if you've missed any episodes, you know you can go and watch on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV, of course, right here on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And the last episode that took place was two weeks ago where I was the guest. And there is a, uh, I think I do have a flyer there that if you want, you can scan the QR code to reach out to me for questions, discovery sessions, readings, and anything else. And if you do not have access to watching this and you are listening you can email dealing with it 76 at gmail.com you definitely want to go back and watch that episode because it was a quite interesting episode if i don't say, say so myself i always impress myself when i go as come on as the guest and the host because i have the gift for gabbing and there's so much that i can share and if i'm given permission to, sh to talk all day i probably would anyhow so I do want to say again, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and spending your afternoon with me, your hour at least with me. I do want to give a shout out to all of my partners that help make this show run as it runs. Now you do know there we are on a different day and slightly different than we've been. And I'm sure by now my regulars know this by heart that we the show airs the first and third Thursday of the month at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. So um it's on Thursdays, way, way back. I used to be on Sundays. So many changes, so many changes, as you can tell from my background. Anyway, giving a shout out to those partners. We're going to start off with Joe Monkman. There is a beautiful digital flyer there. He is our personal development trainer. Then we have Tammy Moses. She's the podcast host and founder of The Hoarding Solution. And I did go out of order purposely. And of course, Last but not least, and also the guest for today, we have Kitty Boudere Foss. I hope I said a middle name, uh, maiden name correctly. Storyteller of astrology, reader of the stars. So there you have it. There you have it. Make sure you connect with them. They were amazing folks. So anyway, there is a lot going on. And I just want to start off by saying, how are you feeling? How are you doing? How are you being? I think those three questions are really important, and they may sound like they're the same questions, but they're really not. The feeling aspect is you check in on your feelings. You're doing. What do you want to do today? What do you want to do? That's your intention setting. And then the being. Being is really important because it allows you to be confident. It allows you to be the leader. It allows you to be powerful. It allows you to be strong. It allows you to be joyful. So ask yourself those three questions on a regular basis and throughout the day just to make sure your vibration is vibing high 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 so i want to tap right into the energy that we have going on for today not specifically for today but the end as my good old friend and mentor always corrects me on um words of wisdom so to speak using different words to raise our vibration and to make everything count so the energy we have going on between Saturday to about, I guess, what is it, next Friday or next Thursday? Let me just double check my notes. Next Thursday, we have a lot going on, but we do have, and we do have a really big energy going on this Saturday. And I'm kind of curious to know if you are feeling that energy already. I know for me, I often feel when the sun prepares to transit out of a sign to a different sign, I feel that several days before it actually happens. And this particular time when the sun is getting ready to transit out of Capricorn and into Aquarius, it's going to have some company. 
which means the energy is going to be even more powerful than it actually is just being alone. And what do I mean by company? Well, to start off with, let's talk about, again, the sun is entering Aquarius uh, during the day hours, and that will be taking place at 9.07 a.m., and then later in the day, in the evening hours, at 7... 7.50 p.m., Pluto, 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 will also be transiting into Aquarius. Now, I'm not going to go too much into that because that's what Kitty and I were chatting about. But I did want to tap a little bit on it for the actual aspects of the date. When we talk about that date, and I invite you to write the date down as 1-20-2024, lots of numbers in that energy for the day, which is also one of the reasons why it makes this day so powerful because when you break down the number system, you got the, the 2020 that mirror each other. And anytime we have numbers that mirror each other, it's a reflection. And whatever the numbers that are mirroring is the reflection of that energy. So, for example, that two is about partnerships. So the relationships we have with one another, it's a mirror. So pay attention to those relationships. Also pay attention to the fact that you may start noticing you having new relationships with Aquarius coming in, considering Aquarius is about our community and connections. The next energy with that is the double choo-choo, which is 22, which is the master builder. What are you building? What are you looking to build in this energy that we're going forward? This year itself, 2024, is a very powerful year because it's the year of abundance. And this energy is leading us to years to come. Then the next set of numbers is the choo-choo-choo, which is known as an angel number. The triple twos is about having faith and trusting. Trusting yourself, trusting your guidance, trusting your community, trusting you're exactly where you need to be at this very moment. And if you happen to be watching this today, you're supposed to be here. It's exactly how it goes. The overall energy for the day when we add it up, all those numbers between the 1, the 20, uh, the 20, 2024, all add up to the number 11, which another powerful number, which is a master number similar to the 22. So that 11 is reminding us that on Saturday, it is about being the master healer. It's also embodying your physical body with your spiritual body and bringing them together as a holistic whole, the whole person that you are. This is not just about your emotions. This is not just about your mind just not about your physical. It's about everything about you on a holistic level. And that's why, at least from a numerology perspective, this energy is so powerful. In addition to we have two planets, hours apart from each other, getting ready to transit into one zodiac sign of Aquarius. We do have other zodiac signs that are in, um, I'm sorry, we do have other planets that are in the same zodiac sign as well. And again, Kitty will be chatting with you about that um, when she gets on in a little while. What I'd also like to do is remind you that we do have this powerful, powerful full moon that's taking place on, I keep looking on my chair because I have my calendar here, taking place on do, 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 the 25th, full moon in Leo. And again, just touching base on it, I'm not going to share too much on it because I want Kitty to share all this with you. I am going to pull a card. So we can set the intention for all that's coming in for today. The card is to help you work on a chakra so you can clear the energy. So whatever may be stagnant in that energy, you can clear it out and be perfectly ready for what is to come over the next couple of weeks. So perfect, except it's in reverse, although it's not the worst in, in, in scenario. Karmic completion. We are all experiencing a major karmic completion as, again, the sun gets ready to leave a Capricorn, and move into Aquarius. This is about new beginnings. And interesting enough, the card is red. So it's about your root chakra, which is associated with Aquarius in itself because Aquarius is associated with the root to ground and get um, centered is what I just heard. Remember the cards in reverse, though. So really pay atten attention to this energy that's coming through and pay attention to where those karmic cycles are being completed. I'm going to leave you with that for now. And I'm going to take a quick commercial break. So this way here, when I come back, I'm going to review a little bit more. Then I'm going to bring in my amazing guests. So I'll be right back.
Hello and welcome. I'm Joanne Angel Barry Colon, your holistic integrative teacher, licensed personal trainer, Reiki master, published author, and card creator. Let me take you down a path of direct communication with the physical body in order to become more aware and in sync with your soul. I will help you to observe and understand the language of the body as it regards to the needs of the soul. Join me on this journey of great expansion and a unique experience. I will help you integrate your mind, body, and soul as you move forward on your journey. For questions, readings, and self-growth discovery session, email healingwithin76 at gmail.com. Hello and welcome back. If you are just joining in, tuning in, or listening, you are watching Joanne's Healing Within. I am your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne, and I just want to revisit our card of the day, which is in reverse, which is about the karmic completion. It's all perfectly aligned. Now, when we talk about the reverse card, keep in mind that reverse just means there may be a little resistance, some, some stickiness is the word I just heard in regards to what's coming through. So many of us may be a little overwhelmed, and it's also a reason to pay attention to your chakra, the root chakra. There was so many new things coming in. And I'm going to keep it short like that, only because I'm so excited I want to get my guest in. So let's bring Kitty Foss in. Because I'm super excited. Hello, hello, my love. How are you today? I am doing well. And as far as I'm concerned, the card kind of said it all. That the you know, I was I was sitting here when you were shuffling. I'm like, oh, it's going to be a root chakra card. It's got to be a root chakra card. And the fact that it's karmic completion is exactly what we're here to talk about. Exactly. I'm, when I saw that card come through too, I was like, really? I'm like, okay, the show's over. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was yes, kind of my reaction, like, yep. Yeah, that, yeah, that's it. That's all we needed, right? We don't need to know anymore. And we do need to know more because I know I'm sitting at the edge of my chair because I am definitely feeling this energy. So talk to everyone about this energy, wherever it is you want to start with this energy. But that's a good place. <laughs> Where to start? Um, so we are sitting here with Pluto at 29 degrees, many seconds of uh, Capricorn, along with our Mars placement and our Mercury placement, both our daily energies about looking at our structures. And because Pluto is sitting there, it's taking our structures apart. And if, especially if you look at what's happened since January 1st, earthquakes, uh, floods, unusual snowstorms, um, the whole eastern coast, Maine, was completely uh, obliterated from coastal storms. Florida hasn't seen the sun in a very long period of time. And so it's, it is it is this Capricorn. It's the undoing. It's what Earth is doing. And, of course, Aquarius is the root chakra. And we have all of these other energies daily stepping forward. How are we experiencing this? That's our Mercury. How do we communicate about this? Where do we put our will in this? And so it is such a amazing time that we're stepping into with this Aquarian energy. And I am excited. I'm excited about this Saturday because exactly what her, your card said, we are moving into, first of all, we said at the sun with a reset of karma in Aquarius. Aquarius is about our vision. And where I'd start is last March when we had the dip into Aquarius that started this whole thing. And what is important to understand about Aquarian Pluto energy, uh, it started like the third week in March till June, is that it is about our vision. It's about our unconscious becoming conscious and very purposefully how we think. And it's interesting because it's the water bearer. So it's not about emotion. It's about carrying that consciousness of the collective the emotions of the collective and how we think about them, not our personal emotions, not our uh, our human manager, a.k.a. ego. It's about the, the collective we. And we're really being called to take those structures apart and hold the best version of ourselves so we can create the best work version of, of we, in a nutshell. In a nutshell, yes, yes. And... Um... 
you know, it's like, it's like, where do we go with this? So with this energy we have coming in, I mean, just the energy of both the sun and Pluto on the same dawn day. Yes. Talk to us about, just talk to about that. Talk on that energy itself. Those two together on the same day. It's not like one's happening on Saturday and then another one's happening on Sunday. It's the exact same day. Talk to us on that energy. Just about 11 hours apart. Um, and it's, again, both of them are sitting at zero, that karmic reset. The, the sun being our engine, how we move forward, how we step and drive through our life and Pluto being our planet of transformation. I mean, so we start the day and then we have those last seconds of taking things apart and our structure. And this is about the root chakra. This is about grounding ourselves in our best version so that we can create what we want to see for everyone. And, you know, it's the water bearer who, you know, in a denser expression doesn't want to get into the emotional piece can seem cold, but it's really about, not about me, it's about the we. So, so me holding myself and being comfortable with myself and is really important with this karmic reset. It is about karmic ties. It is about letting go of things in a whole new vision, a very revolutionary energy. And just so people understand, last time Pluto was in Aquarius in the cycle, which is a 246 plus year cycle, was when the US Constitution was written. It is when monarchies tumbled, French Revolution. It is the pushing of the limits of, of our thoughts. And we have technology we're adding into it. So it's a very exciting time. Yes. And so <clears throat> what I find interesting, and I know many people out there get confused on this when we speak of Aquarius, right away people think that it's a water element. And in theory, it's an air element. It is and, an air element, yes. Yes. And as you speak of it, it, it even though the energy is the element is an air element, it, it's actually talking more about water. And yes, I it's, remember a, a live it's a logical did. approach to our emotions. Yes. Because it's about the group emotions, not our personal. That's what it distinguishes it. Yes. And I remember you saying this morning in the, in the live that you had done. Um, with one of your other colleagues, we, you were talking about that as well, where this is about the, the, the flow of things, like moving into flow. Things, are, as you and I have been saying for quite some time, and I think even our, our friend Joe said it, this, is, this energy that we're moving into <coughs> is really about coming together and holding space for each other as opposed to working on healing. The healing part of what we, our journey that we've done in the last, how many years has Capricorn and Pluto been in Capricorn? 16? 16. It's actually so been a short period of time. Yeah. So in that period of time, that's when we've done our healing. In this period of time, it's not about having to sit in that healing space anymore. It really is about rejoice. The word I just heard was rejoicing in the fact that we can now hold space for each other and support each other with much ease and grace to do the things that we came here to do as a community. Mm -hmm. Very much. It's sitting in our healing and holding that space, practicing these tools. So we create together this larger understanding of each other. Yes. Yes. So when we think of Pluto entering Aquarius and we think of the collective, because this is, this is not a, um, this is not a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not a close, a, a close planet. This is one that's out there. So yes, it's, it's, it's a very long, yeah. long period of time. Yes. Yes. So it spends lots of time in one, one zodiac sign. So in regards, and I like the fact that you use the word transformation. I have to make things intense and say demolition or, or because <laughs> that's, that's just me. I like to bring the drama in a little bit just to get people to shake up a bit. Because, you know, I think theoretically when we use the word transformation, Everybody just thinks that everything's just going to transform so easily. And can we really sit back and say that everything's going to transform so easily? We'd like to think so. Well, <laughs> it's kind of a little bit about the um, reality we create. You know, if you look at taking things apart and moving them around and keeping the pieces you want, like that's how you clean your closet out. 
then it could be easy and fun and joyful. And that's what we're trying to tap into versus, oh, I destroyed and I'm overwhelmed. And, you know, it's, it's very much about being very present in this moment. You know, the person, Tamara, that I was on with today talked about, we don't have to understand it and we have be patient with it. Just be in the present and tap into the, the energy that you want with the vision. You know, um, it is that relationship with prophecy. How are we looking at this new vision? How are we looking at what we're going to accomplish? And what are we, that self-fulfilling piece of it? That's why we're really working on holding our peace. We're on the plane. We're putting our seatbelt on, our oxygen mask on for the takeoff. Exactly. You know? Exactly. In fact, the other day I, I did a live with that. I believe that being the title, um, something such as buckle your seatbelt. Buckle up, yeah. buttercup. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. It, it is. It's like we're on this runaway and we're really getting ready. We're getting ready to shift gears and shift out of that whole Cap Capricorn energy and moving into that Aquarius of connecting, connecting. We don't have to be divided anymore. We're going to be connecting. We're going to come together. We're going to find our tribe. Right. And Cap, you know, 2020 was all about that Capricorn energy because we had so many planets that were pulling things apart. Re but it's restructuring and what Capricorn and Saturn offer us is what's important. And this is the vision for us after we've been taking this apart of what is important. What is it that we are evolving to be? And there will be some distinctions. It kind of depends what you tap into. Um, and that's, so this Saturday, that's what's so exciting. We have the sun that is now bringing us the vision in a period of time, but it will be at zero as Pluto is at zero. And that is karmic reset. I noticed at that moment I had some reverberation. So spirit is like underlining this here. Um, that karmic reset, that very innocent belief that I can be whatever I want to be. We can be whatever we want to be. And an opportunity on Saturday is to ground ourselves, tap into that joy, do something physical and joyful dance, paint, walk, dance. I keep coming back. <laughs> you keep saying dance. And I'm going to throw in another one and say strength train to embody the physical and the spiritual as one strength train. Because my belief is strength training is like probably the one and only activity that you really have to, and even yoga for that matter, that you have to uh, or you need to really focus and, and be attuned and connected to what you actually are doing. Right. Whatever it is, enjoy it though. Yes. That, it's not another way. As a matter of fact, that's that, um, that oppressive energy that we're, we're moving away from. We're moving, you know, we also have um, Neptune sitting at almost 29 degrees, another big energy at the end of a 14 year cycle, coming to an end of a 14 year cycle next year. And we have new spirit awakening that is coming available as it moves to Aries. And luckily, this is my favorite part of the day. The moon is in Taurus. Taurus only moves at the pace it's meant to. It's about the body. So our very private energy wants us to take care of the body, eat good food, enjoy, look at your surroundings, you know, pay attention to your own garden, hold your space in the best version again to hit the for the collective very very spirits at work here with a <laughs> yes yeah. that is so true so what we're going to do now kitty let everybody know how they can reach you and there's a flyer that has this information too give them that i think it's your website that you have yes it's intuition of the soul 11 at gmail.com and by the way saturday's an 11. um yes. you can reach um and Intuition of the Soul is a, a free private Facebook group where people like Joanne, a lot of different people use it to get their information out. So you're welcome to contact through there. And we have programs that come on. So there you have it. So those of you who can see this, all the information is there. And for those who are um, listening to this, she's already uh, spelled out her um, site that you can reach her at. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we get back, Kitty and I are going to chat a little bit about some of the 
some of this energy and perhaps if there's such a thing, what signs will feel this more than other signs? If there's such a thing, I always like to tap on that. So we'll be right back. Hi everyone, Kitty Beauty Wink Foss, the storytelling astrologer, reader of the stars, and I'd like to invite you to join me on Intuition of the Soul on Facebook, a free private Facebook group, where I post a daily energy reading all about how you can navigate your day. Also reach out at intuitionofthesoul11 at gmail.com if you want a personalized reading to find out about how your circuitry works. Namaste. Hey, this is Joe Monkman and I am a personal development trainer and that means that I help people step into their leadership roles, uh, take their place uh, as a visionary, really understand their own mastery in the world so that they can really find their place at the buffet of life. And if you want to know more, you can find me on my Facebook page at Joe Monkman and joemonkman at gmail.com. Hello and welcome back. If you're just tuning in, whether you're watching or listening, I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Cologne of Joanne's Healing Within. I'm going to bring my guest back in. Miss Kitty is with us. We are chatting all about the age of Aquarius and this energy that's coming through on Saturday. And know that this energy is not just for one day. This energy is going to be with us for 20 years. Yes, 20 years, people. That's what I just said, 20 years. So Kitty, I'm super excited. <laughs> to chat a little bit about what the zodiac signs will feel this energy a little more than other zodiac signs. And I do understand that we all feel this energy. And I also understand that some of us feel this energy a little bit more than others due to whatever the reasons are. So what would be those signs if there are any? Well, for everyone, where's your Pluto? Um, and again, not only knowing where your Pluto and what sign it's in, but what house it's in. That's the area of conversation that is going to be additionally stimulated in your circuitry. And so you're probably really feeling it actually at the moment. Um, and then right now, Aquarian placements. Aquarian placements because it's a lot of that energy, a lot of that vision. Like personally, I have what's called Chiron, the wounded healer sitting in the house of value, um, the second house in Aquarius. And so that is how I, it's a tool I've learned to use. If you are an Aquarian moon, you're going to be with your Aquarian sun that multiplied that energy. If you, are, <laughs> if you are Aquarian rising, you are going to be bringing things that bring you vision that perhaps are pushing your boundaries, revolutionary energy. The other thing that's really important to know is Anything that's been at 29 degrees or sitting at zero degrees in your chart is getting a little extra oomph, a little extra charge sent to it. So knowing your own natal chart, those are things that you can a step forward from. And because Aquarius is being lit up, its, it's complement on a spectrum is Leo. And so that's all of us. That's our sun um, anyway. And so Leo... Um, the sun rules Leo. And so our very, very much any Leo placements you have are getting some extra juice right now. And they're also able to help us balance to get a perspective of the vision. And of course, because it is the opposite, that's why it's about holding Leo being the individual, holding that energy, holding that understanding. And very much it's a, it's a fire. It's the embers of the fire. It's what hypnotizes us. So a lot of those things are going to be coming forward as we speak and then we'll have these planets all moving into aquarius too so 
Yes, that's very true. And I'm, I'm going to do also, of course, just for a second. Of course she um, is. Of course I am. Only because it's not related to the topic at all. And maybe it is. As Anne is saying in the comments, and I do agree because I posted in the comments too, that I love your commercial. Your commercial is amazing. The commercial that, that just um, went on for you. Love it. Love it. Love it. I happen to like all the commercials that's um, streaming on my show. And I don't know. I'm a little biased, I guess. But I do love your commercial case. And Anne does too. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Ed. I have a hard time watching it. I understand why people say I have a hard time watching myself. It's like, oh, look at the camera. Oh, you know, it's it's that part of, you know, and it was it was fun to do. It was something new to do. So yes, yes, and I believe you have three of them now, so you can play with the three of them. Yeah. Although just the one that you presented, I happen to like the most, but that's okay. So anyway, yeah, let's get back on topic. Although I think that is on topic if you really think about Aquarius energy. You know, it's it's the some Aquarian, especially with Kitty, that she has a uh, Chiron in Aquarius, which is about not really fitting in and being weird, <laughs> or as some might say, unique. too much. <laughs> it's about being unique. We're all unique. Yes. We are all, you know, uh, unique, and that's the goal. Is the it's very that's really actually very important. Is do we create new systems and groups that accept diversity, or do we find new ways to oppress each other? It's not about our personal, you know. It's one of those four agreements. It's not personal. It's about holding my space so it's open to the collective without me asserting or over app applying the energy to me it's both ways how do i hold my own space um, and know that i'm connected to everyone exactly now and and um i'm just trying to hear how to pose this question um okay as the sun and pluto will be in aquarius we will be experiencing a new moon in Aquarius. And of course, at some point, uh, well, yeah, a new moon in Aquarius. Talk a little bit about that, what that energy is going to be like with those three. Well, at that first, time. We're gonna, first, we're going to experience the full moon on the 25th in Leo. Yeah, I was sort of hoping to skip that one and just dive into the new moon, but go ahead. Okay, well, <laughs> let's talk about the new moon. The new moon is when the sun and the moon are aligned, okay? At, you know, and it, it's the darkness, all right? And, um, it's always about manifestation. And there is a hint for you on Saturday. I think it's a great time to talk about it. If you take the time to be that version of yourself about the vision and the steps you can be taking in the collective. And so it's a great time to manifest if you, if you want to work with groups, if you want to work, have a different way of looking at family, relationship. At that mm. point, we will have Venus in Capricorn. And Venus in Capricorn is, is going to be about stabilizing that bigger structure, what is important in that bigger structure. It really will align the beauty and the value and the balance of that structure. So using that new moon to manifest that kind of energy, that vision of what I want to see, how I want to see it becomes important. And it's about a bigger energy that kind of stretches out over the, we're in the age of Aquarius. We are in the age of Aquarius. Now I could break into the song if you'd like, but. Mm. Sure, because um, I'm not the yes. Yeah, again, so it, it's really very, in this next couple of weeks, really kind of, um, you know, because we're at the end of Neptune, we're looking at dreams and illusions. This is about the dream, the vision, and letting go of the illusions that we have to be separate, that we can't get along. All of those things that we have created as been told, this is the way man is. Um, dream a little dream. Um, it is really an important energy. And so this full moon next week... We're not skipping it. Um, no, 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 we're not going to skip it. I just want to skip it because, you know, for those of you who don't know that I happen to have an Aquarian moon, so I always like to talk about when the moon is my sign. So anyway, so yes, we do need to talk about the full moon. Person, moon. I have a, a moon in yeah. Leo. This so. is why Kim and I get along so well. We have so, 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 so much comparability in our charts. So this is why she and I We are the spectrum of each other. Yes, we are. Our, <laughs> our nodes and all of those things. 
And that's an important thing to talk about. We have a, a Libra South node that has been showing us where have we bought into beliefs that really don't resonate with us. So Saturday's a day to kind of celebrate. I don't have to believe this anymore. I can let this go because we have a North node that is sparking our soul into a new energy, sending it forward. And so a Leo moon is that what hypnotizes me. And the full moon is about shining a light on what we can let go of about ourselves, what we can show gratitude that's in our life, because it's all about Leo, it's all about us, the center of the universe, the sun. And <laughs> it's also about giving forgiveness to those things. And forgiveness, remember, is just not letting it have power over us, including ourselves. It's a great moon of compassion, very strong moon coming in. And um, it is the moon of the sun. So that's interesting about the, the Aquarian piece. It is the moon of the vision, and it is the moon of ourselves in the vision. Our oh, yes. Story. Yes. Yes, I like that. I, I like that. I didn't, I didn't think of it in that way. And, and why all of a sudden, like, the light bulb went off in my head is, like, when you said the, it's the moon of ourselves and our vision, the first thing I – Thought of, especially as a, a, a holistic, holistic personal trainer, is seeing ourselves, seeing our physical body in the actual way we want to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, because as Kitty keeps saying, this is an opportunity for you to start creating what it is you wish to be in this new energy. So, whatever energies we've been holding on to, this is your opportunity to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to envision myself to be in the most healthiest body possible and whatever that looks like for you. Yeah. It, it, there's so many ways to look at the, vi the vision of who I am. And I keep going back to it because if I'm clear of who I am, first of all, I don't need anybody else's, you know, my own life is barely my business, but I really pay attention to it. And I have an ability to let that diversity and understand that we are more alike than we are different. I'm not imposing my rules, my all of those things. And that's why this last moment of Capricorn has been tearing things apart. It is also why we are having lots of discussions, some a little louder than others, about who we are as people, you know. Yes. And yes. it's not about everything is, oh, I have to accept everything. It's about my assessment about what I need and what I'm willing to accept and have in my life. And here's that Libra South Node saying, you don't have to believe that everything is monetary, that everything is unified, that everything has to be the same. It's not about pushing us in a mold. It's about making many new molds. So. Yes, yes. I just want to say, give a shout out to more people that are joining us. We have Cheryl here with us today. So hello, Cheryl. Nice of you to join us. And this, Cheryl, I believe this topic is right up your alley, considering, if I'm not mistaken, um, you happen to be a Scorpio, and um, even though we didn't tap on the Scorpio energy with this Pluto energy, you want to talk a little bit about that, Kenny, before we sure. go into a commercial break? Why she's bringing up Scorpio, which is why I'm so happy it's a Taurus moon, is <laughs> Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. Scorpio energy is the deep dive into the emotional aspect of ourselves, the darkness to find the light. It's the work, it's the ruler of the shadow of the birth and death cycle, but it's about the transformational piece of the birth and death cycle. It is the eighth house. It is the infinity, the forever um, cycle, especially as human being that we're in. And um, Scorpio is about change in its very nature. That's what it's about. And so Pluto rules Scorpio. So that's why it's transformation. That's why it's change. And so on that continuum, Taurus, which refuses to move until it's ready to move, helps that change become stabilizing. Taurus is a stabilization. So our very emotional piece, that is our moon, is in a real stable energy as we take a look at the vision, which is why Aquarius wants you to go through your root and ground. Don't get into just the head piece of it. Just I'm the water that is being poured out is a new consciousness. So, exactly, exactly. Exactly. And before we take commercial break, just want to share it all out to all of you. Should you want to get yourself more rooted, two little quick tips for you. You can go hug a tree. Who wouldn't want to hug a tree? I like hugging trees. Or two, every time you sit into your chair, 
Think about your feet literally being rooted into the floor. And that that um, mirroring of sitting in a chair is a squat, and that's actually activating your root chakra. It's a great way to really uh, connect with this Aquarius energy. So, Kitty, let them know how to reach you again. Sure, you can reach me at intuitionofthesoul11 at gmail.com, or you can find me at Intuition of the Soul on Facebook, or uh, you can find me on Messenger at Kitty Butoeg Foss. And again, for those of you just tuning in and you missed the very beginning of the show, no worries. You can always go back and watch on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV. And you can also listen just in case you're busy doing other things. You just want to put a podcast on. Some of my favorites you can watch on iHeartRadio, Audible, and Spotify. All that being said, we're going to take that quick commercial break. And we're going to come back and chat some more. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Joe Monkman, and I am a personal development trainer. And that means that I help people step into their leadership roles, uh, take their place uh, as a visionary, really understand their own mastery in the world so that they can really find their place at the buffet of life. And if you want to know more, you can find me on my Facebook page at Joe Monkman and joemonkman at gmail.com. Foss, the storytelling astrologer, reader of the stars, and I'd like to invite you to join me on Intuition of the Soul on Facebook, a free private Facebook group, where I post a daily energy reading all about how you can navigate your day. Also reach out at intuitionofthesoul11 at gmail.com if you want a personalized reading to find out about how your circuitry works. Namaste. Hello and welcome back. If you're just tuning in or watching, you are watching Joanne's Healing Within. I am your host, Joanne Angel Valley Cologne. Know that you can go back and watch from the very beginning by watching on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV, or listen on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Audible, and many others. Let's get my guest back on, Miss Kitty. Come join me again. She and I just have too much fun. So, Kitty, this is, what, this, is, this is what I want to spend the rest of our time talking about. We were chatting about this before we went live, even before we got on this today, about retrogrades. Because theoretically, as you and I were chatting before, um, as Pluto enters Aquarius, there's going to be a point where Pluto is going to cross back into Capricorn for a short time in its retrograde. Can you talk to us about that? Because... I'm so slightly confused on, on the dates and everything else, and I'm sure our audience might be too. Well, so, sure, don't know. <laughs> let's, let's start with this last March 2023 when Pluto went into Aquarius and it went direct. And direct means, actually, it's moving counterclockwise, but direct means the, the planet energy is coming to us. When a planet goes retrograde, it's not that it stops but it starts joining the regular uh, clockwise and it's not as powerful. So it becomes about internal work. It kind of comes through you because of where we are with source and all of those things. So what's happening is Pluto went direct in I think at the end of November, beginning of December. I don't even remember. And because it was in Aquarius, when it went backwards, it went back onto Capricorn. And then when it went direct, it is heading back into Aquarius, where it's going to move forward, forward, forward again. And then on May 2nd, it starts its retrograde. It will still be in Aquarius. But because it's moving back far enough, on the 3rd of September, it will dip back into this Capricorn. And that's important to understand because it's now gone over this same set of degrees three times. So it's taking the vision taking things apart, taking the vision, 
a vision again, taking it back apart again um, to fine tune the structure, fine tune what's going on. And then because it's in a retrograde, it starts direct in October to head back, back over that same 29 degrees that it just went back over. So really it goes over it six times that same degree in these retrogrades. And then on, because it's starting to go forward again, just after the American election on the 20th of November, the 19th, depending where you are, um, it will then properly go into Aquarius. And the next time it retrogrades, it will not be traveling far enough to go back into Capricorn. It will stay, um, Pluto is an elliptical orbit, so it's not the same amount of time in each sign. It was only a little over 15 years in Capricorn. That was enough. And now it will be a little over 20 years in Aquarius. It's I think it's 2053 that before it takes its first, excuse me, dip into Pisces. Um, and so it's it's important to know that because we're going over that 29th degree, which is called the aneritic degree. So it's about all the lessons of Capricorn, all the structures, all the potential, all of what's important, taking the pieces out. And then it's going to go into Aquarius about all the ways we see vision, all the ways we put things together, um, all the revolutionary energy that at times can seem kind of cold. And that's kind of the denser expression of it. And we're going back over resetting that karma each time. And so it's and then it'll be there for 20 years. So for a good portion of us, it is the biggest exchange. We we do not live a lifetime and see Pluto in every um, planet because we don't live 246 years. That's why the last time it was in Aquarius, huge thinking things change. The Constitution, monarchy is not accepted. Houses of Parliament, looking at colonization, all of those bigger structural things we change the vision of them. Excellent. I love that. Thank you so much. Now, we all know what goes on at this last portion of the time together. I shuffle my cards. And as long as Kitty is open to receiving some insight, are you? Oh, always. Okay. The shuffle, I want you just to hold on to a question. You don't have to share with me. And we're going to see what the card are going to tell. The card is going to tell you based on the question you're holding on to. One more shuffle for the sake of time. What an interesting card! Huh? <laughs> Threw me off course. Career change. Hmm. <laughs> I can I can take it from Kitty's expression and it's sort of like what? Yes. Well, actually, no, it fits my question. Uh, the, oh, excellent, excellent. And it's so interesting because the actual chakra is the third eye, which is about allowing us to see our visions, which is like the visionary of Aquarius, being able to visualize this career change. That seven is about the balance, it's about your contracts, it's about the, the relationships, the new relationships that are coming through in your career change. Now, usually I don't ask this question when I do give a card reading because it just seemed really surprising to me. I'd never expected to get this card reading for you. Career change, what was your question? My questions were about next steps and really hearing my guides. Um, and so it's not it's not about giving up something as much as it's about incorporating because we have to look at the both words career and change changing yes. something that's happening and interestingly enough we have spirit communication on Tuesday night I got a whole poem about sevens ah yeah mm -hmm. so. yeah yes yes and there will be lots of changing changes coming through for you regarding the different relationships you're going to be bringing in. And I think that plays a big role in that too. And you are in charge. You are the creator to this. So use your third eye, especially during this amazing full moon energy to help you shine your light on what you no longer want so you can really embrace all the new that's coming in. So I'm right. loving that. Threw me off a loop a little bit because I'm like, career change for Kitty? Okay. Well, it's, it's a bigger <laughs> understanding of the career and changing some exactly. of the things that are happening. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's like two different words, so to speak. It's your career and what's going on with the changes are. Changing with the, the pieces up, yeah. 
-hmm. Yeah, not necessarily a change in career. And also could be, again, the whole change in itself. So I love that card for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So again, if you can share with our audience a maybe just one line, one tip that you can offer. I know we talked about all the movement, but one tip you can offer your audience for Saturday in itself. Do something. Set the intention that I'm doing something to be the best version of myself. And it can be in any area, but a movement and a commitment. Do something. Perfect. Excellent. So with that said, one more time, Kitty, let them know how they can reach you. At intuitionofthesoul11 at gmail.com. You can reach for readings or you can reach out on Intuition of the Soul. If you personal messenger at Kitty Beautyway Foss on Facebook. Excellent. So with all that said, thank you, Kitty, so much for being here with us today. Thank I'm gonna you, take a, thank you. I'm gonna take a quick commercial break and I'm gonna come back and just share the conclusion of today's show. So I'll be right back. Hello and welcome. I'm Joanne Angel Barry Colon, your holistic integrative teacher, licensed personal trainer, Reiki master, published author, and card creator. Let me take you down a path of direct communication with the physical body in order to become more aware and in sync with your soul. I will help you to observe and understand the language of the body as it regards to the needs of the soul. Join me on this journey of great expansion and a unique experience. I will help you integrate your mind, body, and soul as you move forward on your journey. For questions, readings, and self-growth discovery sessions, email healingwithin76 at gmail.com. Hello and welcome back. If you are just watch, uh, tuning in, whether you're watching or listening, know that you can always come back later and re-watch or watch for the first time on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Twitch TV, Spotify, Audible, or iHeart. And for those of you who are not aware, I'm your host, Joanne Angel Barry Clone. You are watching or listening to Joanne's Healing Within at the very, very, very end of the show. Do you want to share out that some of our some of my partners do have some amazing, amazing promos for you. So here we go. We're going to talk about Joe Markman's Spirit Messages. He has a six-week series, and I believe we're like literally on the last series, a last session. So if you are interested in connecting with Joe Markman to learn more about the Spirit Messages, please feel free to reach out. There should be a flyer popping up somewhere along the line here, somewhere at some point, maybe not. Anyway. If there's no fly that pops up if you're interested in learning, there you go. There we got it. The last session taking place is coming in this week, and he will be starting up another one, I think, two weeks after that. Then we have Kitty Foss, who has and is hosting Words of Wisdom the third Monday. This is a really fun group to come together with if you're interested in shifting your words a little bit, using higher vibra higher vibration words as opposed to the 3d version words and then last not last but not least monday moon day hosted by me every monday starting january 22nd that date may change a little bit feel free to reach out to learn more about this particular class it is a six-week program and i'm excited about it because it talks about the moon i will be talking about the moon so there you have it the promos just for you with you in mind anyway this was an exciting, exciting, exciting episode today. And I just want to point out, although there's no flyer for this, my new show hat. So for those of you who are interested in getting this amazing hat in this color, because, oh, my God, it's so pretty, feel free to reach out to me, and I will send you the link so you can order your hat. I'm a hat person. I love hats, and if I can have them in every color, I definitely would. I did get a... um, 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 um a suggestion of a the hat coming in orange. I don't know if I'd wear an orange hat, but hey, if Bobby's willing to uh, 
create an orange hat with my logo on it? Why the heck not? Anyway, I'm looking forward to seeing you all back here again two weeks from today. And as always, I like to keep you at the edge of your chair in regards to who's the guest, um, just to keep you guessing. Anyhow, if there's anything that you need from me, there is a flyer that you can check out with my QR code. You can schedule a self-growth discovery session. If you have questions, comments, or if you want a reading, feel free to scan that QR code. For those who are listening, you can email healingwithin76 at gmail.com. Again, that's healing with an H, within76 at gmail.com. All that being said, I wish you an amazing day. Remember what Kitty said. Make sure you do something on Saturday. Move your body in one way. Connect with the earth in another way because this amazing energy that's coming in. A very powerful day. Pluto and Aqua uh, the sun are shifting into Aquarius within a little less than 11 hours from each other. So it's a powerful day in addition to all the numbers that are playing in that day. But for now, and for now, have an amazing, amazing Thursday. Until next time, bye-bye for now.